Professor Andrew Dempster, uh, well done on CubeSat Plus 2024. Thanks for joining us on Australia and Space TV. Thank you. Uh, there's a few, this is, we're on to day two of CubeSat Plus, uh, and that's our second year for being here this year. Uh, and I think the vibe, you have a bigger room this year as well with the vibe. There's a lot of learning going on. Uh, what's your sort of take on it and what's been a standout for you so far? Well, I think the first day was probably the certainly the strongest day of content that we've ever had in this event. We've been running it for 10 years. Um, this is our 10th event. Next year will it be our 10th in-person event. Uh, but certainly yesterday, just the the number of missions. So one, we had a whole session on this year's missions. And 10 years ago when we started running this, there was no way we could think that such a, a session could be run. And I would think that most people 10 years ago would have thought that it was some sort of fantasy to be that that would happen. So let's be let's be optimistic about where we are. I think it's great. We had another session of new initiatives, which were things that have not been launched yet, and we had a very strong discussion late in the evening. It was very um, very interesting. It was a women in space discussion, and it went for an hour and a half. And an hour and a half panel is very difficult to um, maintain the, the, maintain the energy. And we probably could have kept going after the hour and a half. The, the audience was completely engaged. Uh, and it was very, the, the, and the panel was very frank. So it was, it was really quite good for many in the audience to just realize how, uh, how we can help women in the industry and the, and the, the burdens or the, the barriers that they, uh, that they experience that possibly we, the old white men, not pointing, <laughs> not, not, not pointing at anyone in particular, but uh, yeah, it's 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 not part of our life experience, and so there was plenty of learning to be done there, and, and also some quite robust discussion about it that went on into the drink session in the evening. I mean, the even the way that the panel was, um, well, the panel was exercised by questioners like me, for instance, that was analysed in that whole framework of how. Um, some old guy like me can be very robust with their questioning in a way that young women may be hesitant to do. Uh, so, a lot of learning, and and but but also in, in terms of in terms of learning, we just step back from that back to the technical side. We run this event every year. People come along and tell us what they do. I invite everybody, so I sort of know what's going on. But every time I sit down, they go, "Oh, that's amazing!" And I didn't know what they had done that year and the sort of work that they've been doing. So. Um, for people who aren't doing the inviting, I'm sure they're learning a lot more. So it's, it's a great experience for, for many people to come along and, and just see that what's actually happening in the space industry um, by the people who do it rather than people who just talk about it. Well, one of the things I have in, on that is it does seem like it's uh, almost an Andrew Dempster alumni here. You've either worked or taught uh, many of them, about 30% of students. Uh, but also industry that have gone on uh, that you've been working with for some time? Yeah, look, I, w I wouldn't claim to be uh, responsible for all the people who are here, but I think the, when you're in the game for long enough in such a small industry, you do get to know pretty much everyone. Uh, so, yes, I, I know a lot of the people. Uh, most of the good work in this industry is not being done by me. <laughs> it's being done by a diverse range of people across yeah. many universities. And uh, the... the um, the quality, actually one thing we were talking about is the, uh, the lessons learned because it's been, a, it's been a very young industry for a little while and, and people and new entrants to the industry sometimes uh, make the same mistakes as those who've gone before and so we are looking across all those people who are coming in, how they can best learn from those who are already there in a, in a more formalised way because um, those lessons learned are a little bit difficult to pass on. So this is the sort of thing that we will be exercised by later in the day when we sort of do a wrap up. I always make a, have a, a feedback session at the end of the, the event so that people can say what went right, what went wrong, should we run it again, should it be longer, shorter, whatever. Um, but one of the things we're discussing at the moment is how do we get across this lessons learned issue. The other one was New Zealand uh, and some of the uh, operations. It sounded a little bit similar too, particularly uh, from some of their universities building CubeSats also. Uh, and they've had their first New Zealand launch. Um, and I think was something to clarify, you said earlier, it was the missions this year, but they were launch missions. Yeah. So there was a number of them and they've also launched. 
just the the CubeSat industry as a as a whole. Uh, we've also had Curtin University over here as well. There's a, a it's sort of the supportive what we're hearing with CubeSats and satellites in general over the next decade or so. You know, some of the numbers are up to 100,000 uh, satellites launched. Yeah. There, there is this opportunity here, and there is a, a an emerging industry here in Australia and in New Zealand. Uh, for the engineers to be building CubeSats and having them launch, the reality is there now. Yeah. So the the situation we, it's quite interesting the um, the contrast between the Australian and the New Zealand situations. Uh, New Zealand, because of the strength of Rocket Lab, they so that that company has launched had done many many successful successful launches, and that company has in order for them to operate properly in New Zealand, their space agency has needed to learn how to do uh, a number of things in a way that the Australian Space Agency is not being pushed, yep. um, but the two industries are both really quite healthy, given the size of the, um, the populations, the, the number of people who are getting into space in both those countries is, is quite significant. Um, we talk about CubeSats in this event largely because that's a good way of getting into the industry and so on and some people have used them in their own businesses but we are probably starting to think more where we go from here so if we treat this as a new space um, event the the CubeSat is like I say an entry to it but there's more to, to the new way of doing space than, than, than just that the the historical situation in space has been a lot more government uh, as the customer and government investment. The old agencies um, have a very sort of slow way and, and very high reliability way of doing space, which is fine for what they do. But that sort of situation was never really going to arise in Australia. We need to be doing space in a different way. The concept of Space 2.0 is something which actually suits the space industry in Australia quite well. Similarly, it, it, it is a useful paradigm for New Zealand. And so um, we want this CubeSat Plus event to evolve such that it covers all of those new developments and how you go about doing space in a, in a modern way. The last one is, uh, again, it's an observation of the, the mixture of industry and academics and, and students here, because there's a lot of research, still a lot of learning going on. Mm. Uh, as you say, new space, uh, you know, mm. there's still a, that emerging. The other one is the, the workforce development here and the opportunities for industry to reach into their future workforce, uh, the opportunities for internship as well from the student's perspective. Yeah, um, again, because we're thinking of, of ourselves as a little bit of an, an entrance to the industry, we want in future to be more focused on that idea of getting the students together with potential employers and um, bringing to those uh, potential employers the students who are really enthusiastic about space. Uh, the last couple of years we've had a particular sponsor, uh, HEO, who have uh, sponsored uh, half a dozen, eight, or ten, many uh, <laughs> students and uh, so, so the nature of their sponsorship is to pay the registrations of students, students come along. The students um, that they have sponsored have been very helpful to the, the event uh, because it brings youth and enthusiasm. Uh, they generally tend to be a uh, quite diverse bunch as well which is helpful and that model we're hoping uh, we, can, we can roll out a bit further so that it becomes that the, the students have always been relatively important to the event but they are becoming more core and so if that's what we're going to be doing then that, I'm, I'm happy with that because the whole point is to get the industry going. Right. Well look there was a couple of calls to action here. One was definitely uh, sharing learning outcomes. Uh, there's a, you know, a number of universities here all grappling with the same sort of research problems uh, and yeah. trial and error and I think one of the key opening sessions uh, from uh, Ivor Cairns was uh, test, test, test uh, and I yep. think again it's the, uh, that learning process of uh, you know, trial and error. Uh, Pr Professor Andrew Dempster uh, with the University of New South Wales and the Australian Centre for Space Engineering Research, yep. well done on your 10 years with CubeSat Plus and hopefully we'll see you in 2025. Yeah, not looking a day younger than the day I started. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining us on Australian Space TV. Thank you.